Hello. This current cold spell of weather will be easing as we go through the course of the weekend. And next week looks a lot drier. We'll be taking a look at that, but we're also going to be taking a look at what's going on high up in the atmosphere, in the stratosphere above the North Pole. More on that, though, in a moment. First of all, let's come a little closer to Earth, but still fairly high up, say around 10 kilometres, and look at the position of the jet stream. It's been pretty active this year, which is why it's been so wet and windy. But it's just diving south at the moment. And in this, what we call a trough, we've got an area, or several areas of low pressure, all kind of milling around. But we are going to see a shift in the jet stream, and that usually brings about a shift in our weather across the UK. The jet will initially start to weaken and then set up much further north, taking the low-pressure systems and the weather fronts away across Iceland and allowing to the south of it high pressure to move in across the UK. And that will settle our weather down, bringing a lot drier conditions as we go through much of next week. We're not quite there, however, just yet. We've got to get through the transition. So let's look at the next few days in a, a bit more detail. We've got these lows kind of milling around. This one is going to dive to the south and bring more heavy rain to parts of Spain and Portugal. This one's just going to drift down through the North Sea. And then we look out west as these weather fronts start to creep closer to the UK. They're particularly important because that's where the mild air is tucked in behind these weather fronts. So the big question, when will the milder air spread across the UK? Certainly not in the next couple of days. It's going to stay pretty cold throughout this week. But eventually, slowly creeping in that milder air, just trickling in initially to the west through the course of Saturday and then to large parts of the UK, probably by the end of the weekend. But notice the cold air is hanging on still across parts of eastern England. So it is likely to stay pretty chilly here. Thursday's temperatures in the cold air, these are the maximum temperatures. Obviously, nighttime is going to be well below freezing, but the max is three to four degrees for many places, so below average, despite some decent spells of sunshine. Uh, but by the time we get to Sunday, those temperatures will be ticking up closer to average, and certainly in the west with that milder air, double figures likely, but still pretty cold across these eastern areas. So the next four or five days, yes, it is likely to stay on the cold side. Hard nighttime frost, particularly as the winds fall light and where we've got any snow lying on the ground, minus double figures for sure. The chance of snow is reducing, but we could still certainly see some wintry showers in the next 24 hours. Check out the Met Office website for the latest weather warnings. And then, yes, things slowly turning milder. And I do mean slowly turning milder from the west as we go through the weekend. It's also an increasing likelihood of seeing some thick fog patches in the mornings. So that's the next five days. What about as we go into next week? Well, we know we're going to start with that area of high pressure nearby and the weather front's just drifting away to the north now because we've got the jet stream pushing them way up across Iceland. It could be one weather front drifting south, which may bring a bit more cloud and patchy rain. But with this high pressure building through, we're not going to see any heavy rain, I don't think, across the UK. And that high, once it moves in, is likely to stick around, as this chart shows the pressure uh, probabilities through next week. There are the dates going along the top, and these are the previous computer model runs down the side. Red means high pressure is likely to dominate, and there is a lot of red after we've lost the low pressures over the next couple of days. A lot of red throughout next week. So a strong signal that high pressure will be sitting across or close to the UK. Now, the exact position of the high will be crucial to the exact flavour of weather that we see in any part of the UK. But with high pressure nearby, it does mean it is going to be drier. But the exact shape and orientation or centre of gravity, if you like, of that high will play a vital part, whether we see fog or frost or a combination of both. Now, these stacked probabilities just break it down a little bit more. So again, blue is low pressure in charge for the next couple of days. Now the dates are going along the bottom. Yellow, oranges and red. So when we have a, a more static weather pattern and this kind of tangerine orange, if you like, suggests that through Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we're going to have high pressure sitting right across the UK. So sitting fairly central uh, across the country. That's a strong signal through the first part of next week. But those darker reds tend to take over as we go through next week, suggesting that high may just be wobbling around a little bit more and may then uh, just change the orientation of the fog and the frost as we go through next week. 
Now, the details of that, as I say, will uh, remain elusive for a few more days, but uh, we basically know next week will be a lot drier. It's January, so if uh, skies are clear, we are likely to continue to see frosts and a hint, as I said, of, with that high pressure nearby, likely to see lighter winds, which means an increased chance of seeing some thick and some potentially persistent fog patches. So that's as we go through next week. But then towards the back end of next week, the position of the high, as I say, will be crucial. And just an example of that, this is where the European uh, computer model had that area of high pressure. This, this is the UK here. There's the high pressure. This is where the European model had the area of high pressure right at the back end of next week. So well, right at the end of the 10 day period, really still sitting right across the UK. That would bring a lot of dry weather. Again, the likelihood of fog in places, but also a bit of sunshine if you don't get that fog. But the latest run of the computer model isn't that different, the European model. It has the high close by, so a similar setup, but it's just a little bit further west. And that is potentially opening the door to northerly winds and the colder air there, the, the darker blue colour. So that's just something we need to watch towards the back end of next week, the potential for the colder air to slip back further south. But at the moment, the temperatures through next week, again, depending on the foggy conditions and how much sunshine we see, look to be around about average by day with a continued likelihood of frosts at night. But just that hint there of something perhaps a little colder returning towards the UK as we go towards, not this weekend, but the one after. So that's something to keep an eye on. Now, another thing that we're keeping a close eye on is developments over the North Pole, high up in the sky, in fact, in the stratosphere. So we're going way up above where the jet stream is now to around 50 kilometers up. And we're gonna take a look at something called the polar vortex, the stratospheric polar vortex. Now, every winter, this phenomenon sets up. It's a perfectly natural phenomenon. As the North Pole points away from the sun, it gets incredibly cold without any daylight. And what happens naturally is this donut of strong winds that just sets up, we're looking right down on the pole here, uh, just sets up naturally, say, way up in the atmosphere. And this is the polar vortex, and this is the current situation. It's pretty lively, very strong westerly winds spinning around high up in the sky above the North Pole. Why are we looking at this? Well, because something called an SSW is linked to the polar vortex. If those winds switch direction and stop being strong westerly winds and start to become easterly winds, then that can lead to changes in the UK weather days or more likely weeks later. If you see this switch in the stratospheric winds, it can lead to a change in our weather patterns. And it was responsible for the, the easterly winds that we saw back in 2018 that brought us some significant snowfall. Now, I must stress at the moment, the chances of an SSW, a sudden stratospheric warming, are pretty small. But there have been a few signals from the computer models of late that it is becoming at least a possibility. So there's a bit of chitter chatter on social media. So let's take a look at what is going on at the moment. Now the, the stratosphere in those winds, those winds in the stratosphere rather, have been very strong recently, which is why we've had westerly winds and uh, pretty wet and mild conditions so far this year. But a few of the computer models, as you can see here, are showing that those winds high up in the sky may start to weaken. The dates going along the bottom here, so this is uh, January the 20th, January the 25th, the 1st of February. And these are the winds high up. So at the moment, they're pretty strong, but quite a few computer models just suggesting a nosedive, a drop in those winds, not necessarily going easterly because they'd have to be below this zero line to turn easterly, but certainly a weakening of that stratospheric polar vortex as we go through next week. This is the European model when we run it many times. So this is an ensemble forecast of the same thing. There's blue line showing where uh, it is at the moment and it's above average at the moment. So the average line is this red line here, but a strong signal again here of a dip, of a drop in those winds high up in the atmosphere. And then, well, it gets very messy, doesn't it? As you go through towards the end of January and into the early part of February. Now the mean, the most likely scenario is, is this darker line here, which would suggest that the winds are weakening, but are not necessarily changing direction, not necessarily turning easterly. They'd have to be down here for that. But you can see 
a few of the model runs are suggesting that, but it's only a small portion at this stage. So the most likely scenario is that that polar vortex weakens somewhat. Now, this is the American model. I showed you this earlier, that strong signal of what's going on at the moment. But fast forward 14 days and you can see that it's shifted. It has been displaced. Uh, and that is why, as I say, there is some chitter chatter on social media about what is going on in the stratosphere at the moment. But let's clear up a few things. The chances of a sudden stratospheric warming and a shift in those winds high up in the atmosphere are currently pretty small, 20, 25%, something like that. And this is also crucial because just because you see a shift in those winds, it does not necessarily mean that we're going to get easterly winds across the UK. About 60, 70% of the time it does, but that's a large chunk, 30 to 40% of the time, that doesn't actually happen. So one thing doesn't necessarily guarantee another, and the chances of that first thing happening are still fairly small. But it is something that we're keeping a very close eye on. And if I've baffled you over the past couple of minutes, then watch our YouTube explainer on sudden stratospheric warming and it will explain much more there. But if you are still with me, thanks for being there. And make sure you stay up to date with the very latest forecast from the Met Office by following us across social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And then if we do see any updates in what's going on in the stratosphere, we'll be letting you know on there for sure.